Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Omanus and today I will review the fourth and final studio album by the Smiths. Strange Ways, here we come. I don't know if I said who requested who requested um, Mira's murder. I'm not sure if I said that. And I actually don't know. So if you reviewed that album or if you requested that album, then let me know in the comments. Yeah, this album also got requested, but I forgot the name, sorry, so um, let's just get on with it, I suppose. Yeah, like I said, fourth and final studio album by the English rock band The Smiths. Uh, this came out in 1987. So, um, yeah, they basically went their separate way, their separate ways after this. Um, the album did still relatively well, but you can definitely see in... Um, you know, you can definitely see and even look at the album cover, I suppose. It's way less iconic than the first three. <laughs> the debut album being like literally like a naked Morsi or something. I don't know who that boy is, but uh, work on those apps. <laughs> the fuck am I on about? Um, yeah, the album cover is a guy looking at his dick or something. I'm not sure what's up with that. He's looking down. He kind of looks very, um, he, he has a smile on his face, kind of a smirk, I suppose. It, it's kind of like, uh, how, how do you describe a laugh like that? That's a very complicated laugh. That's kind of like a bittersweet laugh, like, oh, you just laugh it off. Uh, you just laugh it off, although you've just experienced like the worst thing ever. That's kind of how this guy looks to me with a pissy backdrop. I'm not a huge fan of the album cover, but what's inside is pretty good. And I believe, um, or well, I want to say, I believe that the Smiths logo was purple. That was pretty cool, Pur purple and yellow. That, that would have been pretty cool, but I, I, I believe that the logo is yellow, or yellow, uh, gray. I believe it's just the gray Smiths logo, so there you go. Um, yeah, we have 10 tracks on this album. We have one less than Meet This Murder, and I'm not exactly sure anymore how many tracks there were on uh, The Queen Is Dead. Uh, well, might as well take a look. The world won't listen. Damn! Louder Than Bombs. Amazing album. Um, louder Than Bombs. Uh, the world won't listen, and Strange Ways, here we come. Three albums in the same year. Damn, damn, Smith, damn. They were very busy in that in that all too brief career. Damn. Um, yeah, so we have a rush and a push and the lentus hours, which is the first track. Uh, by the way, ratings are better on this album than on uh, Meet's Murder, but they are pretty neutral on here, whereas on Meet's Murder. They were pretty low actually, but it was a pretty good, great album. Uh, yeah, with 10 tracks, like I said, a rush and a push and lens hours, a three minute opening track. It starts out very ominous, it, start out, it starts out very interesting. And then eventually it kind of goes into, um, you know, the second track for Meter's Murder kind of goes into a Morsi that kind of sings weird again. Uh, um, I do like it more this time around because it actually sounds coherent and it sounds interesting, whereas on that track it was interesting too, but it sounded very out of touch, it sounded very out of place, whereas this this singing is more, you know, this is more like it. Morsi has definitely learned from his past mistakes, I would say, to uh, sing a bit more coherent and he definitely does on this opening track. Um, yeah, I would say that the uh, opening is the most interesting part about the song and then, you know, last two minutes it just kind of fades out or just kind of goes on like a typical Smith song. Not a lot to say here, a good opening track, but not one of my favorites. Um, I started something I couldn't finish, which is actually a clickable song. I believe it is a single. Um, yeah, this is actually a very... Uh, Kind of a depressing song. It sounds very happy. Um, I would say there's one song on there that is very um, yeah, this is very um, happy sounding, but the lyrics are really depressing. There was like one song on there like that, or all all the Smith songs, <laughs> pretty much. 
Um, I started something I couldn't finish, very a breathtaking track to, to say the least, very emotional to listen to. Uh, yeah, just an overall very engaging and a very uh, breathtaking uh, song to listen to, really. Then we have Death of a Disco Dancer. Yeah, I believe this is a song that is very uh, happy sounding, but the lyrics are really de depressing. Um, or while well, they're basically like making a dance hit and they're basically saying like, um, yeah, you know, that disco is dead and that people that still do it might be, you know, uh, they, might, they might be killed or something. Something between those lines, I might be very off, I'm not sure. But that's what I get out of the song. Uh, you have to be careful not to do data shit, otherwise you're gonna get a bullet through your fucking head. Well, that's kind of dark, but you know, I I think they're they're getting at that. I'm not sure. This is a pretty dark song. I did enjoy it. And then we got "Girlfriend in a Coma," which is actually a very short song. Um, I did. This is uh, a great single, but I did wish it was a bit longer though, because this whole album is only 36 minutes long and 37 seconds. 37 seconds. So there you go. A very short song. Um, it just kind of says. It has some very insightful lyrics. Um, do you really want to pull through? Pull through. <laughs> there are some really funny lyrics on here. It is kind of whiny sounding, but it's you know you can clearly tell the band is joking on this track because they're just like um, they're just half uh, half assedly singing the song. Um, and I don't mind it here because it's funny. It's a funny track. It's kind of brief, short to the point. It's just kind of a funny, uh, joking song, I would say. So definitely a, a good song in my regard. Um, definitely enjoyable. I do really like the string section that is on there. And then we actually have a track, um, the centerpiece, which I didn't even know was on this album. Stop me if you, if you think you've heard this one before. <clears throat> Stop me if you think you've heard this one before. There you go. Uh, and actually I'm very surprised by how catchy this song is and how easily quotable the whole song uh, title is. Because you think with such a long title you, you can never fit that into a chorus. But of course the Smiths can do that. Stop me, da, 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 stop me, stop me if you think as you've heard this one before. I kind of fucked it up at some places but you can actually very easily sing along to the song despite the title being long as shit. So, you might not be a Smiths fan, I personally uh, adore these guys, uh, and I think it's very impressive that they can, you know, make such a catchy short little jingle with just a long ass title, that, you know, you have to compliment them for that. Damn boys, good job. Uh, then we get Last Night, Last Night a, dr a Dream That Somebody Loved Me, I Can Help Speak. Uh, this is five minutes long, this kind of reminds me of the first track, but it's actually way better because it's longer, it's more ambitious, the atmosphere is more interesting to listen to. And I think overall the song is really uh, encapsulating, I think. It's very interesting, it's very um, ambitious again. Uh, it's just a very lovely song. There are some dream pop elements there, there are some uh, poppy elements in general. There are some alternative elements here, so there's a lot of diversity on this track, a lot of like dreamy vibes, a lot of great atmosphere on this track, so definitely give it a chance. I believe this was the last ever single by the Smiths, I'm pretty sure. Oh no, no, no. the last song was, uh, or the last single rather, was uh, Stop Me If You Think You've Heard This One Before, so there you go. And this is the third single. And the second one was uh, I Started I started Something I Couldn't Finish, so there you go. Uh, then we get Unhappy Birthday, which is definitely the song that I was talking about that uh, sounds happy, but it's actually really depressing. I believe that uh, Marcy's basically saying that, uh, oh, no one is coming to your birthday party, you're so alone. Uh, but he, but it, I believe he's still like singing Happy Birthday in the chorus or something. Not exactly, because I think you can, you can get a lawsuit if you like... Um, if you don't ask permission for like happy birthday shit, then uh, you can get a lawsuit because of that. You can get a lawyer. You you can get fucking up. You can get a law law lawyer. You can get uh you can get a fucking. I have no idea how to say this. You you can you can get in trouble. 
You can be in, in trouble if you use happy birthday in a song, I believe, or rather in a movie. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's actually usable, uh, usable in an actual song. But I believe if you do that, you're just seen as a lazy half ass songwriter. So the Smiths don't really sing happy birthday, but they do kind of like an alternate version that kind of sounds reminiscent to that tune. So you can, so it's not lazy songwriting because they do kind of make an alternate version. They make their own unhappy birthday, which is pretty typical Smiths if you ask me. Pretty lovely, pretty bleak, pretty dark and messed up. So yeah, definitely. <laughs> Uh, fits well on this album, fits well on the Smith discography, so there you go. Now we get to paint a vulgar picture. And I do have to say, I do really love all of these songs so far. But I do think that the last couple of songs, they didn't really grab me, honestly. Paint a vulgar picture was interesting. It does sound pretty good. It's, it's uh, pretty nice to listen to. But I don't think it really needed to be five and a half minutes long. I, I think personally that the singles on this album, I started something I couldn't finish and Girlfriend in a Coma, or maybe even Stop Me If You Think You've Heard This One Before. Jesus Christ, long as song, long as song titles. But I think that those songs could, could have benefited from extra run times, whereas Paint a Vulgar Picture could have been a bit shortened, I think. Yeah, I, I think personally if you took like uh, three minutes off of Pain of Vulgar Picture and would have added one minute on those singles then I think the album would have been more enjoyable because the last couple of songs only would have been the last four songs would have been just four, uh, two minutes long and you would have had a pretty consistent closing album and the singles would have, would have been a bit longer I would, have been, I would have preferred that but you know that's the way it is uh, good song, it just didn't really do anything for me, it just kind of, you know, it started and it ended, there you go, it's just, just basically like an A to B kind of song, it just kind of does, uh, you know, it just kind of fulfills its purpose, I guess, so, there you go, you know, it just uh, opens and finishes, good opening, good closing, but not nothing really uh, special in particular, I'm not quoting, <laughs> I'm not quoting a Smith lyric right there. Of course I wouldn't do that, fuck no. Uh, Death at One's Elbow, which is two minutes long. This is actually a pretty tongue and cheek kind of song. Um, I believe the band is like saying that uh, you can kill someone using your elbow only. Um, what they're referring here is I believe that you know your elbow is a pretty strong uh, part of your body. It's, pretty, it's a pretty hard bone to crack. So you can actually like crack some skulls with this fucker, if you know what I mean. I've actually no idea if that's the actual case of the song, but I, I love my own description, so fuck it. You know, sometimes whenever I have no idea uh, where the song's about, I just make up my own shit. And yeah, I think that's pretty convincing though. Just crack open other skulls by using your fucking elbow. That sounds pretty, pretty fucking heavy. And yeah, I believe that this track had a pretty like nice delicate uh, guitar riff that sounded pretty heavy. Uh, it was a, it was either this song or I believe Unhappy Birthday. It really had like a very heavy um, you know build up or some shit. Or I believe it was Last Night I Dreamed That Somebody Loved Me. I believe it was that song but I'm not sure. And then we have the closing track which is I Won't Share You which is a pretty uh, typical Smith song. Um, yeah, it's pretty happy sounding. It's kind of surprising to have <clears throat> such a happy, uh, upbeat kind of song at the ending. It's not, you know, necessarily all the times upbeat. It's kind of upbeat at the beginning, and then eventually it just kind of uh, slows down, slows down, and th then it fizzles a little bit, and then it just kind of fades out, I suppose. And that's that's the whole album essentially. So this is definitely kind of a weird track to close out because I'm usually not, you know, expecting a kind of happy sounding Smith song uh, at the ending or in general. So I'm definitely kind of surprised at this track that they actually ended their career on a relatively happy song. But maybe if we read into the lyrics a bit more, maybe the song is like really fucked up. It probably is, but uh, at the surface it sounds pretty innocent. So. Kind of an old ending to Smith's album, you know, pretty typical for any pop star out there ever. That's like, 
you know, that song is like their whole career, just kind of happy sounding pop songs. But it is not, <coughs> sorry, sorry for that. But it is nice to see that the Smiths do change up their emotions. Sometimes they're mostly bleak and sad and depressed, which I usually am too. Uh, but it is happy to see them smile for once, you know, like the album cover. It's kind of like a bittersweet laugh in a way. So nice ending to a pretty great album, I would say. Um, I'd have to say that this is the weakest uh, Smith Smiths album out of the four, for sure. I believe that Morsi and uh, Morsi and Jimmy Jimmy Mar. How was you call it again? Jimmy Mar, Jimmy Moore. Jimmy, J uh, Johnny Marr, there you go. Uh, I believe that Morsi and Johnny Marr said that this is their favorite Smiths album, which is kind of an old choice. But I think they mainly chose this one because, you know, everyone al already lost the other three. So you might as well pick this one, I suppose, to kind of uh, be weird and shit. Because, you know, the Smiths are, but they're great. So, um, yeah, a pretty solid, consistent album it's uh, 10 tracks long 36 minutes long pretty straight to the point pretty typical smith sounding songs although this one was a bit darker but the queen is dead was also pretty uh, dark so there you go so um it is kind of a disappointment i would say it is you know the queen is dead is like the greatest thing ever and then you have this album which is still great but it was definitely a disappointment because you know, everyone was just expecting another Queen Is Dead 2, probably, probably not. But, but if you want another Queen Is Dead 2, you want another amazing album like that, then just listen to Louder Than Bombs and Head Full of Hollow. And I believe Head Full of Hollow, Head Full of Hollow preceded Queen Is Dead. Um, and Louder Than Bombs uh, was the follow-up, or it was... Yeah, I, I believe this was the follow-up to Queen Is Dead, so... Or no, 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 the follow-up was The World Won't Listen, and then you had Louder Than Bombs, so... I suppose so. Um, and actually, um, I saw, like... Uh, a particular channel, I'm not gonna name them, because, you know, that would be a bit disgraceful to the, to the Smiths. But, like, one particular channel cited the world world won't listen as a bad album by the smiths it's the weakest smiths album doesn't mean it's bad it's still a great album but it's definitely the weakest offering by the band together with uh, strange ways strange ways here we come but still a great album so i'm gonna give this album a 9 out of 10 i think it started out pretty strong or it started, started out kind of iffy but interesting and then it's uh slowly built up pace and it became better and better and then I think at the last three tracks, they didn't just didn't really interest me all that much. But I think tracks one through seven are truly great. With the first track being an iffy opener, but eventually being getting better and better. And I think the last three songs are still good, but they're not amazing. They're just pretty solid tracks, but they, they're definitely kind of leftover, let it be kind of tracks, you know. There are tracks that are good, but it's definitely kind of like B-size material, which is weird because Smith's B-sides are fucking amazing. So it's really weird to categorize those songs, but I guess the B-sides are better than the A-sides, you know, at least uh, for the Smith's sake. So there you go. Um, yeah, there, there you go. That's the Smith's. Um, huge fan of them. I love the Smith's. I love Morrissey. Might be, con might be controversial, but... You know, they make great music. Morsi is kind of a dick, I can't deny that, but I'm kind of a dick too. Um, yeah, so I, I guess I relate to Morsi, I suppose. Maybe I am the Morsi or something of music, I don't know, of uh, critics, I don't know. But um, yeah, it's actually not that bad. But yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, let me know what you think about this album, Strange Ways Here We Come. Uh, last studio album by the Smiths. Um, I do. I would love to review more Smiths because I've reviewed their main four ones. If you want me to do Louder Than Bombs, Head Full of Hollow, which I already cited as two of the best compilation albums ever, so you know my ratings for those two already. And um, um, The World Won't Listen. If you want me to do those albums, then let me know in the comments down below because I would uh, love to do all of their albums in a way, those last three compilation albums. 
So let me know if you want me to do that. Like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.